Hi everyone, Greg Heilman here with The Sound on Stage. Today we're going behind the curtain with Frank Ferrante, actor and writer, and by far the foremost Groucho Marx impersonator. Uh, Frank is bringing, bringing his critically acclaimed one-man show at an evening with Groucho to the area next month, uh, appearing at the Buxton Center for the Performing Arts on Bainbridge Island on Thursday, April 4th, and the next night at the Admiral Theatre in Bremerton, April 5th. Welcome to the show, Frank. Thank you. I appreciate it, Greg. Thanks for having me. So you and I met a few years back when we were doing the Heilman Haver thing. And um, boy, you've uh, a lot's been happening for you since uh, since then. You've been a busy, busy man. Uh, your PBS show, Groucho, A Life in Review, debuted. Uh, you've reprised your role as Caesar in Teatro Zinzani. You've been all over the place with An Evening with Groucho. Um, you're clearly one of the busiest artists that I know. How do, where do you get the energy from? I don't, it's a great question and, and I'm happy I still have the stamina and the endurance and the, um, and the energy, as you say, I don't know. I'm just, it's, I think I'm of a certain ilk, you know, of uh, the, uh, just I'm part of that tradition. I just have that kind of, I'm designed as a physical performer. I, uh, it requires a lot of stamina to be in the arts and to be in the performance arts and to be a physical and a verbal performer like I have been since like I have since I was, you know, in my early 20s, since I was 22, I started professionally, but I was always involved in theater from the time I was a boy in, during, even during, you know, during the high school years. So I've always been active. I've always been physical and uh, I love it so much. So I have a great passion for what I do. So that's part and parcel to it. And that helps fuel my, my physical attack on, on what I do. And much of what I've done over the decades has been physical, whether it's uh doing a playing in a farce, like a Ken Ludwig farce, mm. Marx Brothers musical, or a Cirque show like Teatro Zinzani, like I have done in San Francisco and Seattle, of course, for many years. Or the one-man show. A one-man show requires a great deal of uh, physical energy and uh, fortitude. So uh, <laughs> I think it's practice. It's like, I mean, it's, like uh, it's, it's conditioning, it's training mentally and physically, uh, I'm not necessarily an athlete, but I'm athletic in my work. And, sure, um, you have to you be. Know, I'm never happy unless unless I give a hundred percent. You know, physically, I don't like. I like to win in the st in, in, when I'm on stage. I want the audience to have a great time. I want them to laugh or be moved or both. So it requires uh, everything I got. Yes. <laughs> so I don't think about it anymore. Dan. It really, in part, uh, to tell you the truth, Greg. Keep the head down and 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 do the work. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so for the folks who aren't familiar with the show, when did you first debut it, Evening with Groucho? And then how has it uh, transformed? Do you keep evolving it over time? Well, in Evening with Groucho, great, great questions. Evening with Groucho started as a senior project in 1984 when I was at the University of Southern California. I received eight units to perform this one-man show in Evening with Groucho. Uh, I started out as in a church hall in my hometown of San Madre, California, near Pasadena, that was the break-in. That was the warm-up for the, the performance on campus at USC, in which I invited Groucho Marx's son, a playwright, a writer, to see me. He did. He showed up on my campus on April 26, my birthday, on my 22nd birthday. And Groucho's daughter was also in the audience. And so was Maury Riskin, who had written Marx Brothers shows with George Kaufman. He'd written A Night at the Opera, Animal Crackers. He was now 89 years old. And they were all on my campus at this performance. And it was a success. People stood up and it was a very heady, breathtaking experience for a 22 year old student <laughs> in theater. And Arthur Mark said, if I ever do a show about my father, I'd like to use you. And he stuck to his word. And I graduate. And within the fall of 85, I was portraying Groucho from age 15, 80 to 85 in Groucho Life and Review. A different show. That's a biographical piece in which I, in which I you know, span 70 years of Groucho's life. Um, but an evening with Groucho um, reared its head again in the early, in the 90s. And the, for the last 20 something years, I've been touring with an evening with Groucho, which is a two act comedy with music in which it's the best of Groucho. See, you know, uh, songs, one liners, um, you know, bits from their films and Broadway shows. But probably most importantly and most impacting is the improv a third of the show greg is improvised and that is something that's evolved 
since 85 in the 90s and the last I've done the show now you know several thousand like 3,000 times in over 500 cities and that particular show is now on PBS and 80 percent of the country available for streaming and on DVD but that's that's where it wound up from 1985 to 2024 uh you know it's been about it's almost a 40 year yeah. journey for the one person show there aren't many shows i think that are still going after nearly 40 years uh, hal holbrook i think has the record in, in mark twain tonight and he became a good friend of mine in the last years of his life and he always used to say to me keep it going so the show i'm doing in bremerton at the admiral and at the bpa in the in, on Baybridge island on the fourth and the fifth is the is the culmination of many many audiences many years many many laughs, a lot of tweaking and rewriting and shifting around of material and discovering what improv works and creating new improv. Every time I do it, there's something different and new. There's different moments. I think that's what audiences love about the show. But so that's the history of An Evening with Groucho that started out as a senior project in a church hall and wound up on PBS. That's and amazing. So that, it's crazy. So when you're when you're doing the improv, is it like learning a foreign language that eventually when you get to the point of fluency that you're thinking in that language and you don't have to do that translation? Uh, is it is it the same that you've been doing Groucho for so long that you're you you're in a certain mindset that allows you to improv not as Frank has a thought, has to convert it over to Groucho, and then it comes out that it's actually the Groucho that's in your mind uh that comes out? Well, I, I like to think it comes out of the character out of Groucho Marx and thinking like Groucho Marx. And I've never thought of myself as an impersonator. There are people that do much better impersonations than I do, including Groucho. But I, I consider myself an actor, someone who's like immersed himself, himself in this particular role. And when I do other roles, whether it's Caesar and Teatro Zanzani or, you know, pseudolists and funding where the form, whatever it is, you find the spirit of the character and communicate that, of course. And, but you start to, you know, you learn to think like that person. And yeah. I don't think too much at this point, it's like flipping a switch. People go, do you, you know, what do you have to do to get into it? I mean, I, I, I stretch, I warm up vocally. I stretch my body. Um, I move around. So it's the blood is, is flowing. And, um, you know, I may run the lines just so it's still there. Cause the, you know, I'm, I'm not 23 anymore, <laughs> 60 years old. So I make sure that it's right there at the, the, the you know, right there at the tip of my tongue and, ready to go. So I've learned to think like him in the moments of improv moments. And I've done a lot of interactive, immersive comedy, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, in the circ world, in the circ, in the circus world, uh, which has kept me oiled up. So I go from that world where, where I'm doing a lot of audience work, crowd work, as they call it. I didn't realize it was a whole art form that <laughs> I've been doing for years. And kind of been fortunate to be at the forefront of that there's not a lot of crowd work comic actors in the, on the planet and i'm happy to be one of them sure. but um it continues to develop so and the audience teaches you you know you you figure out where you know who to play with who not to play with when to back off when to lean in what's appropriate what's inappropriate what's right on the edge you know i'd rather go for that you know rather take a chance than not Mm -hmm. to get to laugh to to provoke is what i want to do too he's a prof a provocateur is what provocateur is that the word provocateur provocateur Provo something that, like yeah, that we'll have to look it up something, yeah. something that someone, someone who provokes is uh, there you that's go a, there that's you a, go <laughs> that's a comic that's what comic actors should be doing uh, people like um you know barry humphreys who was dave Medina was one of my heroes it was one of the greats at it. Pee Wee Herman is cha challenges an audience. I love Paul Rubens. Um, a lot of, you know, some people, people like that, Groucho himself, of course. Sure. Provokes and, and, and held up the mirror to our behaviors and, and teased us and challenged us to look at ourselves. And I've had some fun with, with characters and um, pursuing that, that, that particular style of comedy. Yeah, that's uh, I think some of the best theater is that which makes you look at yourself and look at your, you know, how your behavior and makes you have those some sometimes hard conversations. Yeah, yeah. So you've been in Seattle, obviously, before we mentioned Teatro Zanzani. Um, when you were uh, 
in, during that show's run, uh, did you get a feeling for any sort of uniqueness or characterizations of the Seattle audiences or theater scene? Were you able to kind of get a feel for maybe what's unique in the Pacific Northwest here? It's a good question. I, I mean, you know, I've probably worked in Seattle more than any city in the world. Collectively, I've worked and lived in Seattle for years. I'd say Philadelphia is up there. San Francisco's up there. New York. Um, Chicago. But Seattle, uh, I think more than any. I've worked in there doing the Caesar character in Teatro Zanzani and Groucho. Whether it was one-nighters in the performing arts centers or sit-downs at, at Act Theater, for example. Yeah. Um, I think that Seattle audiences I found were generous and open. And that, I mean, the fact that I was able to work there for so many years with that character that was brash <laughs> and there's a politeness to this, to that, to that world too. And I think my character is a bad boy. You know, he <laughs> is, uh, you know, he says things and does things that you would never say or do in, in polite society. And I think there was something attractive about this irreverent character I play, the Caesar, uh, something that was attractive to Seattle audiences. And it's part of the great, this great um, form that Norm Langell came up with, you know, with, you know, there was a lead comic that was your host played by several of us over the years. Uh, there would be a, a generally a female, a chanteuse, a singer, and then a lot of variety acts. Um, but I, you know, the, the, my character had, sometimes 40, 45 minutes of opportunity to work with audiences. That's a lot. Three yeah. different blocks out of a show. Sometimes you're doing a third, if not more of a show, you know, that, you know, along with the dinner service and, and everything else, of course. Um, but to answer your question, I, I just have had a good experience. I've developed a relationship with that audience and have a lot of uh, wonderful followers in that, in that community, in that world, in the Pacific Northwest uh radiating out of seattle actually so i've played you know i feel i've hit so many so many suburbs i mean dozens of suburbs greg you know from tacoma to you know you name it to uh i can't think of them now from auburn to i mean i'm returning to Bem bremerton and bainbridge yeah. and you know uh, all the way up to wenatchee and it, it just goes on and on yeah and um but the audience is you know, it's a there's a lot of theater, as you know, in, in Seattle over the decades. It's one of the great theater cities. And it's a lot of great humor that emanates and on stage from Seattle. So I feel at home there. And I feel like I've always been embraced in that community. And I've always been welcomed full on. And I, I, I'm always, you know, when I would fly in from I grew up in California, in Pasadena area. I was born in downtown L.A. Every time that plane would come into land into Seattle, I look out that window this has been now for over 30 years. My heart just beat a little faster because I knew something special was going to happen. Uh, and it was, it was always, I've never been disappointed by Seattle or the response I've gotten from Seattle audiences. And I built a little mini following there. People that like, have seen me in Groucho or seen me in the Cirque productions of Teatro Zanzani. And I was very proud that my character was the most you know, the box office would tell me at theaters and something, you know, your character, Caesar is the most requested character. Uh, and that makes me feel great. I mean, yeah. I'm sure others were probably as requested. Some of them, there's some great performance artists, you know, like uh, Kevin Kent, who's magnificent. Um, uh, Veronin is, uh, you know, was a beloved figure in that community, did comedy and magic. Um, Kevin Kent doing drag and, but, and, and also interactive. He was the first person to, really to to perform in that form in, in seattle that norm brought to the pacific northwest um and he he was the first and i was i followed i was basically the second person to take on the mantle of this interactive comedy yeah it's changed my life it's getting you know it's i'm doing it now for like i said since 2001 that's 23 years and i hope to do it again you never know you know or it, we'll we'll see hopefully i'll be back in seattle at some point yeah fingers crossed certainly, certainly will be in april <laughs> that's for sure um well speaking of, of home so as a native uh pennsylvaniaite or pennsylvanian i guess it would be so i grew up a little bit northwest of philadelphia um mm -hmm. and you uh have a special relationship i think with the walnut street theater in in 
Philadelphia, which I which I find interesting. I know you were just doing some shows there. Can you talk about your history with that theater because it's you seem to have a specific history there. I do. I've worked at, at the Walnut Street Theater is the oldest continuously running theater in the nation. It's 215 years old. For many years, had the highest subscription in the world. Uh, I think at its peak, it had 55,000 subscribers. Now, times have changed since the pandemic for every theater. But it's a very successful venue. And uh, everyone has played there, Greg. I mean, the Barrymores, um, Marlon Brando tried out Streetcar Named Desire there. Um, Helen Hayes, uh, the, the Booth family, of John Wilkes Booth fame, they managed the theater in the 1860s. What, during the time of the assassination, all of them were shuttled out of there because they would have been, <laughs> yeah, you know, they were going to be attacked, basically. Yeah. Um, W.C. Fields has played there. Like some of the greatest plays and musicals, Neil Simon started there. So I have a history. I started working there 31 years ago during Groucho, A Life in Review, which is the show I did in New York and London with Arthur Marks, who that's the show I did with him when I was 23, 22, 23, 24 years old. Years later, I was, I was, they picked up the show that I just closed recently. I just finished the, the a run of Groucho, A Life in Review, in which I play Groucho from 1585. Um, so, Part of the history of that theater is the Marx Brothers played there in 1923 and 24. So this marks the 100th anniversary of the Marx Brothers playing in I'll Say She Is, which was a musical review that was so successful. It still is the longest running show at the Walnut Street Theater in Philadelphia after 215 years of That's existence. Fantastic. I had no idea. And that show was so successful that yeah. they toured it and then moved to New York to Broadway. That was their big Broadway de debut after playing in vaudeville for 25 years so, so that became kind of big that went so the smash in philadelphia led to a smash on broadway which led to another smash on broadway to another smash on broadway which led to their film career and their iconic status as you know the funniest people some of the funniest people that ever lived in, in the history of the cinema so i've directed Neil Simon there, I've created, new, I've directed new work there. I directed a play there that was a two-hander that was called Old Wicked Songs that was a Pulitzer nominee. I'm very proud of that. And I edited, I helped develop that piece. And I played Funny Thing Happened One of the Forum there as Pseudalist. I directed it as well. I, I, um, I've i done Ken Ludwig, the Lend Me a Tenor. He did Comedy of Tenors. I worked with him. I did uh, just so, so many shows there, probably 20 shows as a director and as a director slash actor. So I have a great affinity for Philadelphia and the Philadelphia theater scene as I do for Seattle. I have a few of these spots in the country, like I mentioned, Seattle's one, yeah. Philly's San Francisco. So, um, no, it just, I just, I was just there today saying goodbye because I closed last night. And um, it's very moving when you're in a theater like that where all these ghosts, you know, that we think about all the laughter and all the tears and all the audiences and all the great performance artists designers, directors, writers, performers that have been under that roof. It's it's um it's very moving to me. And to be part of the tradition there is uh it means a lot to me. I like being linked to tradition. That's why I would, you know, that's what that's how Hal Holbrook and I uh, bonded is that uh I I he he appreciated that I respected the tradition of the theater and respected what he did and what his contributions are and have been. Excellent. Well, we're happy to bring your tradition to uh, Seattle and keep that one going. Uh, Me too. In a couple of weeks. So you're obviously, as we said, super busy. Do you have anything else in the works? Anything else that you're doing, um, you know, kind of in, in parallel with uh, um, taking your show back on the road here? Well, mostly, but mostly is happening is I've been working so much lately. I spent several years in Chicago with Teatro Zanzani and the Cirque shows. And mostly I'm doing one-nighters of an evening with Groucho Life in Bremerton and Bainbridge in April. Uh, we're looking at touring Groucho Life in Review, which is this larger show where I play you know, Groucho through the years. One actor plays Harpo and Chico. One actress plays 11 female roles. It's a musical. And uh, Arthur Marks Groucho, son, as I mentioned, wrote it. So we're going to probably, I'm gonna, we're trying to tour that. Would love to return to the Cirque realm. I'm not too anxious. Things kind of just come my way. I'd like to explore more of uh, film and television. So I've been talking to people about creating a series uh, for me with uh, with some with some colleagues of mine who are working for many years. 
the theater is a rough racket. So it, it's like, um, it's always good to diversify. And I think I like to put my time and money into developing content that someone, you know, that, that could be streamed, put out there on YouTube or wherever, who, whomever you know, will take it. So that's the next step. And I think that there's a slight pause happening this year for me for a reason. I Yesterday was the last performance. There was a thousand seats sold, sold out. We get word, Greg, before the show that there is a fire. There is a protest. There is a parade. Half the audience can't make it. But oh. this is the kind of stuff that you encounter in the theater. I can't control that. Yeah. If it's on film, on video, don't have to. It just goes out there. But my whole life has been dealing with pandemics and competing with the Super Bowl or the World Series or weather. And quite frankly, after 40 years in the theater, you know, it'd be nice to see, not have to fight so hard, maybe find other ways to, to, you know, share ideas and entertain yeah. and hopefully stimulate and exhilarate the way I was exhilarated when I saw the Marx Brothers when I was 10 years old. And, yeah. And how I feel when I see Barry Humphreys as Dame Edna, people like that. So I think I'm at the stage and age where I, you know, and I've, I've done fairly well for myself. You know, it's, you know, it's for freelancers. It's always been a hand to mouth. It just is as a freelancer in the theater who in the right mind would choose this. Wait a minute. <laughs> I've had a very fragmented life, but you don't choose it. It's like, you know, it sounds corny, but it chooses you. And I love it so much. And I was just talking to, one of the producers at the Walnut this this afternoon, I said, uh, I want to be doing this until I'm 90s. I just want to like my friend Hal Holbrook did. I mean, I'm, you know, my goal is I just want to keep out living every, you know, everyone I just want to keep out living them all, all the naysayers, those agents, those producers who, who, you know, I just want to, want to keep going, <laughs> you know, and I have been, I'm very fortunate. And I've had mostly, people that have advocated for me over the years, which I'm, I'm very, including audiences, like audiences in Seattle who have been so gracious and they're all over. So, you know, when I go on social media, so many of them are from Seattle, friends of mine. Some of them are, have become good friends that started out as patrons and have become yeah. very close to over the years. Excellent. Well, you have a website, uh, eveningwithgroucho.com and you mentioned the social media. How can people follow you and, and find out what's going on with Frank Ferrante? Thank you for asking. Eveningwithgroucho.com is probably the best bet. You can see what what I'm up to, where I'm where I'm playing, whether it's in Groucho or in other shows. Um, I'm on social media on Facebook under Frank Ferrante, but mostly you can go check out an Evening with Groucho on Facebook, Instagram, Frank Ferrante's Groucho. You can follow my antics there as well. Um, if anyone who wants to see the PBS or the television version of the show, they can just go on eveningwithgroucho.com. It's on the show's on Broadway on demand. It's streaming on the PBS app. It's on DVD. So it's uh, it's in the world. I'm very proud of the film version. It played the Seattle market back in 2022 when it when it first rolled out and it's still available on PBS mm -hmm. in the Pacific Northwest. So I want to thank your your viewers slash listeners for supporting my efforts too. And you, Greg. Oh. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, the The show is very enjoyable, and um, as are you to talk to. And I appreciate you taking your time out of your your busy schedule to uh, to chat with me here for a little bit. And hopefully, we'll see you coming up here in a couple of weeks at either Bainbridge or Bremerton. That's right. And they can get all the information on my site. So thank you for sharing, spotlighting what I do with your with your followers. I appreciate it, Greg. Thank you. Okay. Um, my guest has been Frank Ferrante, and he is bringing his Evening with Groucho to Bainbridge Island and Bremerton on April 4th and 5th, respectively. For more information on the show, you can head out to eveningwithgroucho.com. And for tickets to either performance, head to admiraltheater.org or, or for the Bremerton performance um, or bainbridgeperformingarts.org for the Bainbridge event. I hope you do have a chance to see this unique and truly engaging and entertaining, per entertaining performer in this show. Thank you all for joining me behind the curtain on the sound on stage. I'm Greg Heilman. And until next time, I'll see you at the stage door.